Hi everybody, this is Oksana and in this video I'm going to make this little ring. I asked you guys in my community tab about this if you wanted to see a ring like this and most, or I think everybody actually voted yes. I didn't get any votes, no, so um, I wasn't sure because not everybody has this type of thick half round wire. This works with half round wire. I know a lot of people um, usually ask when I use this type of wire, can you just do it with regular round wire? But you really can't in this case. Like, I mean, I don't, I personally don't think so. I think it would be pretty much impossible to use round wire because if it's going to be such a thick gauge like this, it's just going to be impossible to bend and you're going to have a hard time trapping your stone in and it's not going to have those nice flat edges that are just right up against the stone, you know, because it's going to be rounded on the other side. Like mine is flat, so there it is right up against the stone. So I really recommend using the thick half round wire for this design. And it can be done with a cabochon. This is a little tiny cabochon there. It's just a really quick and um, fairly simple ring. It just takes a little bit of practice if you haven't worked with this type of wire before. But then once you get the hang of it, it can be pretty simple and quick to make. So if you want to see how I made this, just keep watching. So I'm going to be starting out with one piece and it's about seven inches long of my thick half round wire here. And here is the spool of that wire, half round copper, 14 gauge. So normally 14 gauge is a really thick wire that's difficult to work with, but because it's half round, it is um, like half as thin so it makes it half as easy to bend and flexible and all that stuff and um, I purchased this wire on RioGrande.com and I'm sorry that my voice is all stuffy still recovering from that nasty cold and you probably can hear birds there was a pretty loud bird just now um, there are just a lot of birds outside <laughs> it's a really nice day and they're just like in the trees singing and stuff. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to hold our wire, see the flat side and then the rounded side. So we're going to do the flat side down and you're going to figure out the size ring you want. Now the ring is going to end up being a little smaller. So say you want a size eight, you maybe would do eight and a half because as you attach the stone, wires are going to wrap around the band kind of making it smaller in there so this is my ring mandrel I'm aiming for about a seven and a half so I'm just gonna do it here on this eight just go ahead and bend it completely around and try to do it in the middle so these little ends are kind of equal okay so here is my ring band. So after you've done that, I'm going to take another type of wire here. This is half round wire as well, but this is much thinner. This is 22 gauge. It actually doesn't say it on here. It says it in millimeters, but I wrote it on so, <laughs> so I don't get it mixed up and it's 22. So what you want to do for that, you just need a little bit because you just have to connect these two wires to each other. So I'm just going to take, you can either just cut yourself off a little piece or you can just keep it on the spool as you work with that, whatever's easier. Cut it off afterwards. So um, I'm just taking my pliers to help me guide it through here. But I'm basically just wrapping that thinner wire there, just wrapping it around to make a nice little connection there. So at this point I'm just going to cut it so that I can work with this little end here. 
So the number of wraps that you want, I, I would say that you need at least four. So right now, that got me four, as you can see, but it doesn't hurt to do a few more because it also depends on the size of your stone. Now I do recommend smaller stones for this because it will be much more difficult to trap a large stone with this design. So I ended up with six little wraps here and I'm gonna just trim that so that the little ends are here because that's where the stone is gonna be and it's gonna cover up those little ends and then you won't see them. So you want them to be here. <clears throat> and then here's my stone just to show you the sizing of it. So this is like a nice little base for my stone to sit on. Here's my little stone. And I'll try my best to measure it, but it's so small. I don't know how successfully I can measure it. Um, it is, let me zoom out a little bit. So it's more than five millimeters. It's like, I think it's seven or six millimeters, just in that ballpark. I mean, yours doesn't have to be literally identical to mine, just a small, small little stone. And I find that round works better as well. It's just easier for me personally with round ones. All right, so I also just cut my nails, so it's like harder to, <laughs> I use my nails for everything and it's harder now because I don't have any, because one of them broke and so then I just cut them all short because it was bothering me that they were different lengths. So because this is half round wire and it's got a rounded and a flat side, what you want to do is we're grabbing it here with our pliers and we're turning it, you can see it there, being turned. We're turning it so that it is um, kind of sideways. And you just want to, like you wanna turn it, but you don't wanna create the tiniest ever little space here because your stone has to go there too. So just kind of created like an angle. And then here on this side, so be mindful and maybe use your stone periodically just to see that it sits there nicely. And so we're just turning it so it's the flat side is this way, the rounded side is this way. And then we're just turning it like that. And so we're just kind of creating this little like base for your stone to sit on. So then when you take your stone and you put it there, I know it's hard to see, but I can't really let it go because it's going to fall. So see, I put my stone there. It's just kind of sitting there on that wire. So you want to just wrap the wires and you can kind of, I'm just going to give it a little squish because there's just a lot of space there. There we go. So let me try to do that again so I can show you. See how the wire, oh, and it fell, <laughs> is kind of going around the stone. All right, so let me put that back in. So I'm just going to continue with both of those wires and now it's going to kind of stay in a little better. There we go. Okay, so as you do this, make sure, like I'm pulling on it right now with my pliers because you want to make sure that you're not leaving like this huge loose kind of gap around your stone because then your stone will pop out of there. So what you can do is you can just kind of pull, see how I pulled it and it lifted it up a little bit and it trapped the edge of the stone. 
when I did that. So I'm pulling and like lifting it a little bit, lifting the wires a little bit. So when I place them down, see now my stone is staying in because this little window that it's peeking out of is not the same size as a stone. It's a little smaller and it's kind of going here on the edges. Okay, so this might take a few tries for you to get it so that the stone is trapped. <clears throat> but once you do, so I have my wire on either side here, so I'm just going to take my wire, I'm going to put it through the band of the ring, and I'm just going to bring it all the way around. So there's a few choices, like you could bring it completely around and make a little loop like I would just what I would do in that case is I would turn it like this so it's sideways I would grab some round nose pliers and I would make a little loop or you can just have it without any loops so before I do that I'm just gonna um, do the other side as well so that I know that it's kind of finished on both sides there all right so I'm going to do it without any kind of swirls and loops. So I showed you what you would do if you wanted a swirl, but now um, I'm going to demonstrate without. So if you look at this little bit here, the way that I'm cutting it is so that this little end can kind of just like fit in there. So I'm going to get in here and I'm just going to close up that little loop, I guess, that goes around the wire. And then if you can feel the end of it, push it in there further. Just like push it in there until you can no longer feel the edge of it. So the wire end is going around and touching itself. That's the key. You want it to touch itself that way it doesn't poke. So I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. So here's the little wire end. You can see it sticking out. And I am just closing it up. And as I do that, I'm also just kind of trying to push it that way. Push it inwards towards the stone. So when you close it, it's in there and you can't feel the end the little wire end and if you can feel it then just try to push it in there further like this until it's hidden away so the result oh, wrong way the result is this little ring where you've got a cabochon trapped by this thick half round wire and it's holding it really nicely here on the edges and it's holding it from the front. And here is your ring. Let me just measure it on the mandrel here and see what size it ended up being. Oh, so mine actually stayed an eight. It didn't get smaller. I thought it would get smaller from these little wires here wrapping around, but I guess it didn't. <laughs> so, uh, but sometimes they do. It's kind of a hard thing to guess. Like, I don't want to say now, oh, just do the size that you think you need because then if yours ends up getting slightly smaller as you work with it, I think you just have to kind of play around and see what they turn out. But basically, that's it. It's, it is a little bit, um, what's the word? Like, it looks nice and thick, like it'd be sturdy, but if I, you know, were to squish it right now, it, it would squish. You know, I think it's a little bit fragile, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. But so is pretty much any wire wrapped ring. I mean, if you pushed hard enough, you could squish the wires because they're, you know, they have to be soft enough for you to bend them with your hands. And this is just one piece of wire. But I think overall, it's, um, you know, it holds up well if you're just kind of careful with it. And yeah. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.